Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Josh Halter. I am the owner of TheBioDude.com. Many of you remember me from my YouTube channel, Genesis Exotics, and the owner of GenesisExotics.com. You can visit my full website on TheBioDude.com, find me on Facebook, and of course, subscribe to my videos. Today, I'm going to talk about a completely different type of setup, a self-cleaning, self-maintaining desert ecosystem uh, terrarium for a leopard gecko. I think leopard geckos are one of the best candidates for a setup like this because they are intelligent animals. Um, while they are nocturnal, they do spend a lot of their days digging, for uh, burrowing tunnels, and then of course at nighttime, you know, uh, hunting and foraging for food. Um, and today I'm going to go over the steps of utilizing the BioDudes Leopard Gecko Terrace Sahara mix. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Terra Sahara substrate and I'm going to dump it right into the bottom of the tank. One bag is six quarts, which is about 1.5 gallons. With this substrate, it is very heavy and very dense. One six quart bag weighs 6.5 pounds. And there's a reason that it's heavy is because this substrate directly mimics the rocky shrub lands and desert lands that these animals are typically found. Leopard geckos are found in Iraq and Afghanistan, typically in the rock crevices and caves um, on the very bottom layer. Once in a while they'll go upwards, but above on the mountains they typically do not. Um, so here I got my substrate all nice and leveled out here. So this substrate, you'll notice that I did not put a base layer down. That is because the humidity content of this vivarium is not going to exceed 40%. With the exception of a small portion of the vivarium, which I'm going to show you how to create a natural humid hide that will retain the perfect amount of moisture to give your leopard geckos a nice place to hide. So after I get the, the substrate in, I like to give it just a good misting on the top. Just to, just to get the, the uh, top layer wet. Now, as far as your maintenance goes with this substrate, you want to make sure it stays relatively moist on the bottom layer and the top and the middle layer. But the top the top layer will always dry out. That is exactly what you want. So after I get the top layer taken care of, I am now going to start adding in the most important part of your bioactive setup is your springtails and your isopods. Now the isopods um, are crustaceans that have been around since the age, the age of the dinosaurs. Um, it's as simple as dumping in your BioDude isopod culture into the top. Okay, you're gonna notice all the little bugs slowly disperse. And then your isop and then excuse me, your uh, springtails, which are arthropods, that have been around for a very very long time. That you simply dump into your tank. Now what these animals do are break down organic matter. When I say organic matter, I mean feces, uh, leaf litter, which I'm going to instill into this tank, um, as well as uh, break down some of your, your spag moss. And what they do is as they break those things down, they put organic nutrients back into the soil, help rejuvenizing your soil. They also go in and out of your Terra Sahara, creating beneficial air pockets, which is essential, uh, essential for proper root development and your plants such as, especially as uh, uh, soft cacti that don't have any spikes, um, or succulents, which I tend to use succulents a lot with leopard geckos because succulents can handle the beating, as can the cactus. So essentially, these small organisms help clean the tank for you. Leopard geckos have a tendency to go to the bathroom in one spot, so, and it's always the drier spot of the vivarium. Um, so it's recommended that uh, that when they find that area, you want to try to give it a mist, misting, a heavier misting on that side of the tank at, at least once a day, just to ensure that that area doesn't completely dry out. Um, so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to start decorating with my cork. Since leopard geckos really like to hide during the day, I would like to uh, give him as many different hiding opportunities as possible. Um, and I'm going to be putting his humid hide over here, which is where his under tank heater is going to be. So I got some of the New Zealand sphagnum moss that the dude sells. And you're just going to put that 
right here on the top on one side. Now this, you're gonna give a pretty heavy mist. Now, not only is this important because leopard geckos in nature, there's a reason that they're, that they're inside um, during the daytime because that sun is very hot. What this does is in the harsh desert terrain, this gives your leopard geckos a place to go to protect themselves from the harsh sun. So in the wild, when they're in these humid dens, as they exhale through process of, of, of osmosis, they lose water. This helps them take in more water while they're resting. It helps them shed and it, and it helps keep them clean you know, with it, with their eyes and in, in, in their mouth because of the humid air, so it's not as dry. So it does provide a lot of natural benefits that way. The next thing that I like to do is get my uh, succulents planted in. So I'm gonna put one succulent here in the middle. Oh yeah, I'm digging this. This is cool, this is looking nice, all right. And then I'm gonna put another one. You know what, I'm gonna put this other one right here. Now, it's very important with the succulents that you give them a good amount of soil. Almost all animals with the Sahara appreciate a deep, dense layer of soil that utilize this substrate because the best part about this substrate is that it retains all tunnels and burrows. So bearded dragons, your leopard geckos, your desert iguanas, animals like that, they will create underground dens and it will retain. And similar to Zoomed's excavator clay, without the needing of mixing it in with a substrate that you have to replace anyway in a couple weeks. Next step is we add in our biodegradables. Now the biodegradables are really important because what these are gonna do are slowly break down. And as they break down with uh, springtails and isopods and with natural uh, different types of, uh, of fungus that occur naturally in these types of, of the, the soil that I make, called mycorrhizal fungi, that provide the natural processes of breaking down some of these leaves when there's a little bit of humidity present as well as different types of bacteria. Now, one of the biggest things that I would like to uh, touch base with this is with desert substrates in general, what makes the Terra Sahara so great is that it essentially is so dense, but it doesn't condense to the point when air gets trapped in there. It creates a granular, there's granular holes all over the side here. So that really prevents bacteria from getting stuck in there, which can grow anaerobic bacteria, which is really bad. Because when that starts growing, it can slowly start making your substrate toxic. So excessive feces, things like that, build up over time, that can cause fungal infections in your lizards and things like that, and, I, and I, I'm not down for that. So, so as you can see here, I got the full layer of the leaves, the succulents, and of course his places to hide. Next thing I'm gonna do is give this tank a nice misting, right like this. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit out of here and give the succulents a light watering. Succulents love neglect. They love it. Water them once a week, a light watering. Mist the tank every single day. That's your maintenance for the, for the Terra Sahara. It's great. It's fantastic because after you get this set up, you never have to do it again. Initially, you're gonna have to spot clean, absolutely. Spot cleaning is extremely important in the beginning stages until the bioactivity builds up. But after the bugs become established, the bioactivity with the bugs will take care of the fecal matter for you. It is still recommended to double check just to make sure once a month that there isn't a place that the bugs might not be getting to. So after I get the lid on, I'm gonna use one of the BioDude LED lights. Plug 
plug it in. Oh yeah. Now I really like these lights because all of them have different uh, amount of diodes in them. I offer 8, 16, and 22 inch. Cacti and succulents in general need a bright, bright light. That's why they have typically broader leaves is because, or pads, excuse me. It's because they need to take in as much light as possible. These LEDs do the trick with your desert plants. Now, um, a lot of common questions that I get with leopard geckos in particular. What if my lizard eats some of this substrate? What happens if my lizard eats some of these leaves that are in here? Leopard geckos in general, they live in, on rocks and sand. In the wild, typically when they dive to catch their crickets, they, they ingest sand almost every single day. If your animal gets impacted, 95 to 99% of the time is because of improper husbandry. If you are giving your animal improper husbandry, lack of humidity, the hot spot isn't correct, things like that, you're not offering them the right types of food, their immune system can get suppressed. If their immune system can get suppressed, things like substrates that they could typically pass when they're healthy, since their body's weakened, they're not able to do that. When they're not able to do that, their body slowly builds up the substrate or whatever it is that they're eating that they shouldn't be, it gets stuck, causes septicemia, and then they, and they die. Uh, so if your gecko is healthy and it is being taken care of in the matter which leopard geckos need, the hot spot and everything, you really don't have anything to worry about. Another good question is the heating. A lot of people like to use under tank heaters. I really, really like the under tank heaters because as the heat rises out of the substrate, especially where the humid hide is, which is right where he ran into immediately, it really raises up the, it really helps uh, with the air in the water to become like a little sauna. And that leopard geckos absolutely love that. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of different methods for people keeping these animals. A lot of people too, to keep them on paper towels uh, because of the risk of getting impacted. Uh, I can tell you I'm not about that. Uh, I'm not about it at all because these animals are extremely intelligent and when given the proper resources, they become very active lizards with really unique behavioral niches that that's what makes keeping them cool as, as animals. So you can find this exact kit on my website um, under, leopard, under the species specific kits under geckos and then you can select leopard geckos. This was built with my Terry Sahara substrate and again my name is Josh Walter. I am the dude because that's what you call me and you can visit me on the biodude.com. Thank you very much.